another married at first sight review season 11 episode 6 already i feel like it's flying by but yet we haven't gotten anywhere fast if that makes sense it's like god it's episode 6 but we hadn't they're still in the honeymoon they're just about to go home to real life now being a married couple but here we are they are on their last couple days at the honeymoon and that's where the episode picks up from where we left off last week so same as always, I'm just going to run down couple by couple. However, I am starting to think if I should recap it in the order that the show goes in. I don't know. I'm toying around with it. I'm not sure what to do. I don't know what you guys may like better. So if you have a preference, let me know in the comments and then I can switch this up for it to flow with the show a little bit better rather than going couple by couple. Just let me know. I don't care either way, but let's jump into it. First, we're going to go with our fan favorite, one of our fan favorites, Bennett and Amelia. Amelia and her little head adornments, <laughs> it's just so cute. We've gone from, you know, the the bird in the nest at the wedding to now we just have a hat full of flowers as the opening scene of this episode. I swear, they are just so cute, but sometimes they like, it's like an episode of the Brady Bunch that you were copying and pasting into into 2020 with this couple sometimes just the way you know they're you know hippie bohemian vibe so the way that they dress is just like marsha jan somebody is about to come in from the brady bunch at any moment now but they just continue to be so cute amelia's little song that she wrote was so cute she's just so talented for you to just you know have all those have extra talents on top of how smart you got to be to be somebody's doctor, okay? <laughs> That's a lot. So I thought her song was really cute. Her little guitar playing and her voice gave me really Alanis Morissette vibes back in the day. She was giving me that. I was like, okay, Amelia, super cute little voice. I like it. So um, moving on with them throughout the episode, we see them still continue to talk as we've seen on the past um, other episodes of just them really having these deep, meaningful conversations to really learn more about each other, their upbringing, their family, and things like that. I continue to absolutely love that piece of them that they have this way of having really important conversations and being it being really deep and meaningful, but at the same time, it's light, if that makes any kind of sense at all. But it's like they can gather all this information and just have these easy, deep conversations without it feeling like you're like interrogating somebody or getting too deep or being too nosy or whatever it is. But it just flows and they really have, they really gather great information about each other that I think is really good to know to set the foundation of a good marriage. So I really like that. Um... When they went out to, well, I'm going to save the the piece of when they went all went out together. I'll maybe save that for the end. So um, when they were on the floor and they had built their little fort because there was something they wanted to do before they left. So they knew it was coming up on the last night. So they went ahead and did it. Um, cute for y'all to do that and everything. But I don't even like to walk on hotel floors barefoot. Talk about laying on the floor. Not my cup of tea, but Ben and Amelia, it's right up their alley. <laughs> I can totally see them doing that even before they did it. Um, and her just falling asleep on him. I was like, y'all just falling into this whole married life real easy because th that's what that's what wives do. You say you're not going to fall asleep. You say you're not tired. And as soon as the movie goes on, you start talking, you knocked out. It is what it is, Ben. Get used to it. <laughs> All right, and then we move on to Olivia and Brett. Sorry, I'm using my computer today, not my phone for my notes because I was just sitting in bed watching it and it was easier to type here than on my phone. So that's why I have this out in front of me. Next, we will move on to Olivia and Brett. Um, Brett just continues to, you know, tap dance on my last nerve with almost every other thing that he says. Um, he made, you know, these really petty comments about, you know, her brushing her teeth and 
flossing when she was like, you know, she may not do it every day. And he was just like, he acted like it was just completely disgusting. Yeah, my hand would have met his face, probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then once they went out to dinner with each other um, and Olivia brought out discussing salaries and how much they're making. And they, you saw them whisper in each other's ear how much they were making. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but I could immediately tell, which I think I expected her to make more money than him. I mean, she's a nurse practitioner. She's going to probably make more money than he does. I can't even remember what it is that he does. But nurse practitioners make pretty good money. So I'm just like, that's probably going to be a given that she's going to be the breadwinner in this situation. But I immediately felt like his demeanor changed, his attitude towards her. It was like everything shifted just a bit because maybe he thought about it, but I guess the reality of it was a whole different story for him. But I was like, dude, you you were already skating on thin ice and for him to act like this, it just made it 10 times worse because I felt like every time she had something to say after that in regards to money as they were talking, he had a rebuttal for it. Um, so, you know, her saying, you know, she liked to go out to eat. She liked to drink wine. He's like, well, I'm fine with cheap wine. And then she mentioned, you know, having nice things or something. And he was like, well, I'm just used to going without. And then she again mentioned, you know, buying her things or going on trips and things like that. And he's like, oh, I'll just rather invest and build long term. Okay, that's what you like to do. But she's telling you what she likes to do. This is not a tit for tat or for you to one up or make you look so humble while she looks like she's so materialistic. Like that's how it came off and it aggravated the hell out of me. I was just like, Olivia girl, I don't see how you are doing it, but she is doing a great job of like holding it together and still being very sweet and genuine. So kudos to you girl. Uh, but he just continues to have like, a sense of humor that I don't quite think Olivia gets it and it may end up being a problem for them because he does say little snide things that I think he means as a joke but she really doesn't laugh most of the time so since he has that sense of humor we know that his family also has this odd sense of humor and they have no intentions of changing themselves for anyone else that I think you know him especially being coupled with his family, that that may end up being an issue for them long-term because it just, it gets annoying real fast. So good luck with that. Um, swimming with the Stingrays when they did that looked really fun. But, you know, if you grew up in the era of Steve Irwin, yeah, once the Stingray took him out, I was like, <laughs> we done with the Stingrays. Every animal loves Steve and the Stingray took him out. I was like, no thanks. But it was so cute. Um, let me see what else that didn't include the dinner that I made notes of. Um, seems like it was pretty consistent in my notes that, excuse my French, but I just kept saying Brett's an asshole. He is an asshole. Like he just kept doing things throughout this entire episode to really show us that he is just, he's not ready for this. He's a little bit too self-centered and I don't think he's really ready to incorporate somebody else's wants, needs, um, thoughts, attitudes really into his life. He just thinks the way he thinks and wants to do what he does and it's right and whatever. He just doesn't want to move past that. So I don't know how that's going to work out. Um, I did enjoy the conversation that Christina brought up to Olivia towards the end about her just having, you know, seeing red flags and just wanting her to be careful about that. I know Olivia felt like she kind of took offense to it of like, you know, she's only been around him a little while. How she's going to tell me, you know, more about him when I've spent more time with him. Well, to be honest, you've only known him for like a week as well. So I think, sorry, that was my dog. He started making a weird noise. Like, what's wrong with Um, But for her to just really kind of to push Christina's thought off just a little bit, which I understand. It's like, it's my husband. This is my relationship. Kind of mind your business. But also making sure that you're also listening to other people. Because again, when you're in the situation and you're trying to make something work and you like somebody, you're trying to build that connection, you can ignore red flags that other people may be able to see. So just not saying you have to believe everything or feel everything that they feel, but definitely take heed 
to what they may be saying um, because I feel like everybody has kind of picked up on that. They maybe haven't told her, but they've seen it. But just, you know, take heed, keep it in the, you know, back of your mind of like, let me just make sure I'm keeping my eye out and I'm not being foolish with everything. So that was all um, that I thought that was the issue when they talked. And then just him having an attitude with her that previous night after they did meet with all the couples and they had their little conversations, him having a nasty attitude with her that night. And she was trying to, you know, ask him, well, you know, when we get back home, what are you looking forward to? What do you want to do? And he was just real short with her because he was in his feelings from earlier, but he could not verbalize that he felt some kind of way earlier, but just had an attitude and it made her have an attitude. And I was just like, yeah, you need to fix that. So I'm glad the next morning he did end up saying something and addressing his behavior. I just hope that's not a running theme of you are not going to be able to constantly, you know, dislike something and then you have an attitude about it and then just try to apologize the next day thinking that that's going to make everything better because that is going to get old real fast as well. Of You need to be able to handle yourself and your emotions and your attitude a little bit better than that. So we're going to... Skip on over to Henry and Christina. Literally, my notes are like this much on them. <laughs> um, Christina, they just, oh my God. I just, I might have to go back and watch the first couple seasons of kind of just what the information was about the two of them to try to still figure out what the experts saw to match them together. Because I'm just, I'm missing it. I am totally missing it with these two they just seem so opposite i know they say opposites attract but it's like they're just so polar opposites that i just don't know how this is going to work out for them in the long run i just don't get it in the beginning of the episode her you know talking to him i believe they were by the pool and she just kept pursing her lips a lot like like girl okay and the you know producers were trying to talk to them and again very cold with them and i'm just like i i don't get why you why you two are a good match and why you are together i i don't know i'm still trying to figure it out but she just continues to say that you know she wants him to you know take charge and you know be this manly man and things like that and i'm just like that's that's not who he is. This man said he's never approached a woman at the bar. This is not who he is. Like, I don't think no matter how much she wants him to be that way, I just don't think Henry has that innately in him to be an aggressive type man. And I think even if he did do that, it would not be who he is. So it would still feel very awkward to him because it's not in his nature to act that way. Um, but she just keeps saying that's what she wants and I'm like I don't think you're gonna get it out of him honey like I think they the experts have just done both of them a very much a disservice in putting them together because it's just it ain't good but you know whatever um once they showed them back on the um paddle boat I was like lord they put Henry back out in the water in a boat <laughs> he already thought he was gonna kill himself last week when they were in the boat and then here they come this week y'all got him on a boat in water again and when christina fell i was like he's gonna have i knew he was gonna have something to say because he's just so dramatic and cautious about basically any little thing that you do can cause death and he's like i'm about to become a widow already and i'm just like henry give me a break my dude <laughs> give me a break it is not that serious just live a little i was happy to see for a little bit this episode he talked a little bit more um he actually did a little bit better when it came to eye contact so i was like okay looks like he's trying but it just continues to look so awkward and it just it's uncomfortable it just looks uncomfortable for the both of them and it's uncomfortable for us to watch as well so Jesus, we are on episode six. I hope this gets better with him as the episodes go on. Because, man, um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Let's move on to Karen and Miles. Um, I thought it was really, really big of Miles to let Karen know about his um, diagnosis of being clinically depressed. 
that was huge to not only share that with someone that you really don't know that well, but to share that on national TV, knowing that the whole world, well, everybody that watched the show is going to see this. I thought that was huge of him. Um, Cause again, there's always some sort of stigma around, you know, mental health and depression and things like that. So I thought it was important for him to bring it out and make it, you know, make it more normal. A lot of people have it. A lot of people have it that are not diagnosed and aren't taking the right medication and just all over the place. So for him to actually recognize, you know, I wasn't feeling right. Something wasn't clicking and I didn't know why. I didn't know why I was feeling this way. So for him to take that initiative to, you know, get checked out, figure out what's going on, take this medication, realize when he's having an episode and be able to verbalize, you know, what he may need from her when he is having one absolutely loved and that showed so much maturity with him but of course on the flip side i know karen i feel like she's gonna add that into the little black book to the little all the rest of her notes of why this isn't a good guy for her so along with you know her not being she don't like to be called a cougar with him having so many monogamous relationships with him being younger than her she's just gonna add on this clinical clinical depression to that list of things so that in the end when it comes she's going to have this laundry list of things as to why she cannot stay in this marriage so i kind of took it for what it was because she even said it and she kind of used that of saying you know i i wanted somebody you know masculine and for you know him to now i'm, I'm not saying her exact words but to the effect of him to now share this information with her on their honeymoon it's like Girl, just because he told you that does not mean he's a man. I think that really shows his masculinity that he's secure in it to be able to share that information with you so soon and on national TV. Like, I'm beginning to not like Karen. <laughs> She's starting to get on my nerves every episode. Um, So, yeah, I, I wanted it for her, but I feel like since the very beginning with her getting the text message and her looking at his social media and things before the wedding that it's just been downhill for her since then and i just don't know if they're if they're going to be able to overcome it despite whatever miles does because he is being a gentleman he seems to be sincere it just seems like whatever he does it's not going to be enough to maybe keep her in this marriage and grow to wherever they need to go so i don't know um and then i really I couldn't believe that Karen slept in a hoodie. Like that morning they woke up, they were about to leave. She woke up in a hoodie. I'm like, if that isn't saying, don't touch me. <laughs> I don't know what else is. But she is like straight up, nah, I don't want I don't want you to even think you have potential of getting in these draws. <laughs> Cause it ain't happening. I'm sleeping in a hoodie. That means I don't want to be touched. Okay. And I'm just like okay Karen I, uh, okay I just I just hope she can get out of her own way and at least and I'm not saying get out her own way and fall in love with the man get at least get out her own way to actually enjoy the process and to really know him to figure out if she's making an informed decision of marriage staying married to him or divorcing him at the end she just seems like she just wants I mean, I know, you know, they say women like bad boys, but it's just like, God, what you want them to do? Like slap you around, slap you on the ass, throw you around, cuss you out. What you want from him <laughs> that he is not giving you? I don't know what it is, but okay, Karen. Anyway, we're going to move on to the up other fan favorite, Woody and Imani. Like legit, if they don't make it and Bennett and Amelia don't wake, make it, I'm not watching this show no more. I'm not doing it. I've watched every season and if they don't make it, I'm done. Married at first sight can go on somewhere. I'm done. Because <laughs> I just love Woody and Amadi together. Woody is definitely putting on the charm on his wife. I don't blame him. She's a very beautiful girl. So I do not blame him for like laying it on thick and letting her know like, I'm your husband. You my wife. Let's go. <laughs> um, I do like that Amadi is a realist because I do compare her and Karen just because their stories are similar as far as heartbreak and heartache that they've had with their previous relationships um and it just seems like for karen she's built up the walls that are harder to break down for miles and for amani on the other hand 
she's able to let Woody in, but still be cautious of, I this just feels too good, but she's not letting the, the thought of it feeling too good hold her back and her not enjoy herself. She's still letting herself, you know, be in the moment and be there and enjoy it, but she's just, you know, playing in the back of her mind like, okay, you know, if this kind of goes sour, I think I can prepare myself, but for now it's good and I'm going to enjoy the good. So I do like her being a realist um, and having that mindset in the process of this. And again, like I said, Amani, she's gotten the vibes from Brent, just like the rest of us of he up to no good. <laughs> just to put it easy, something ain't right. Something ain't right. And as we watch, I'm pretty sure the episodes, we're going to see what is going on. Um, I feel like Woody gets any excuse he has to take his shirt off. He's going to do it because he wants Amani to keep looking at him, wearing her down, and he wants to get the draws. <laughs> so we, they were doing the um, dune buggy little excursion. As soon as he sits down, he has to take his shirt off. But that was super cute for she was like, I, don't, I haven't even seen you drive and I'm letting you put me in this thing. So just, you know, her having, you know, that courage and safety to actually just let him take the lead and drive. That looks super fun. That would be something I would definitely want to do. If um, I had the opportunity to do an excursion like that, that looked like it was so much fun. But uh, I just love them. And I want to be Amani's friend. Like, girl, we can be virtual friends because just feel like we got a connection. We just, you cool. You cool people, you know. Um, at the end of the episode, before we, you know, get into when the, all the couples were together of them coming back and Woody having the place all laid out with candles and roses and a bubble bath. Girl, we know what was happening. We know what was happening, okay? We knew what was about to go down. The way she walked in there and saw it, it was like, okay, that took, that was the key to unlock the last notch of the chastity belt. It is gone. Let's get it popping. <laughs> but I knew, I knew it was happening because it again, the sexual chemistry between them has just been so much these past episodes that it was bound to happen. Of course, the next morning they confirmed, she confirmed that they consummated the marriage. And it will, to, I think to all the viewers, it was like, well, duh, or it's about time <laughs> that y'all just went ahead and got it in. So I'm happy for them. I, I think, again, they are having just a great time, really enjoying the process in each other and not letting too much of their head get in the way of what's going on. So with that being said, we're going to wrap up the end of this with the couples all getting together and you know, having their little girl and guy time at the restaurant slash bar. So we see them all get together. And um, once all the couples get there, we see them branch off into, you know, a group of girls and the group of guys. And they start talking to see how things are going. As far as the question about rating your marriage, that was definitely a producer inspired question. <laughs> uh, throw this out there. Somebody ask it, okay? Um, since both of them asked it and it's just like, you've been married for like a week. Um you going to rate your marriage by space of a week? Okay, whatever. So the guys go around and they rate each other. You know, Woody rates his marriage pretty high. Um, Bennett, I feel like he's just like 10 and just was like, leave me alone about it. We got no problems. Everything is good. Of course, when they get to Brett, um, he has to make a comment about how, you know, rating something is like so degrading and um, he feel like he can't do it and he won't do it. And I was just like, you do, you are blowing this way out of proportion. And the funny thing is the producers, I'm sure it's how they cut the material, but it's like in the midst of him saying that and going on his little rant, <laughs> she is then turning around and giving them a rating of a seven and he hears it. And that is what pisses him off so bad. And I laughed, I laughed. It was funny that he heard her and he got upset because it's like, you're doing too much. Nobody took this question that seriously. It was like the question they asked before about how would you describe your spouse as a fruit or something? And they kind of went around and said stuff like, it's just fun and games and conversation for all of us to, you know, have while we're together. But for him to just be on his high horse making this statement and his wife is over there and is like, I rated a seven. <laughs> Ooh, so 
funny that she did that. Um, and his little feelings was hurt because he felt like he was doing so much that I guess he felt like if the rating, I'm sure, was a 10, he would have been like, okay, I'm cool with that, even though, you know, rating is just, you know, so bad or whatever. But since she didn't give him a 10 and he felt like he was doing so good, he got in his feelings about that. So I was like, you know, whatever. I feel like, I don't know why Christina and Henry are on opposite sides of the spectrum because it's. I think Henry rated them like a seven or an eight and she was like five. And I'm like, Henry, y'all are not a seven or eight. Y'all are close to a four or a five, like she said. Like, y'all are not there. Y'all are not even having really deep, meaningful conversations. Not even just about each other, but about your families if you're uncomfortable talking about each other. Y'all are not there. You're not having that. You're not kissing. You ain't showing no affection. Like, you are not a seven or eight. <laughs> not even. Um, but, of course, Karen and them saying the, the same thing of being along the same lines of they're just not there. Amani rating her and Woody both rated a nine, which I thought was really good because they're on the right track of what they're doing. And then um, them just asking. And then the guys, they were asking if, you know, your spouse wanted to have sex, would you do it? And of course, he, no, it was, um, who was it? Brett? Yeah, I think it was Brett that he was, you know, just acting like, again, well, no, because they skipped over Brett because they didn't want to talk about it. it. was Henry of, um, you know, saying like, no, oh, no, I'm not sure. You know, Bennett's like, I mean, we ain't made whoopee, we smooch, but I mean, I'll be down. And of course, we know Woody would be down for sure. And then um, Miles was like, I know she wouldn't be comfortable um, or ready for that right now. So I wouldn't do it. So I thought that was really good about them. Once they went back to the girls, I was so happy that um, with, it was Amelia and she was talking to, um, what was it? I'm trying to see if I wrote it down on my notes but Amelia yeah Amelia told Karen she was like once um Karen was just you know saying some not so sweet thing about about Miles about you know she's just you know really young and you know they just aren't there and it's not her type and blah 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 and he's just not you know manly or whatever and then Amelia was like maybe Miles is just a sweet guy that likes you a lot. And I was just like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> He's just a sweet guy that probably likes you. Like, I, it aggravates me because, I mean, I get it. You want this, this man that I guess feels like he's going, you know, protect you, fight for you, kill somebody for you and I feel like Miles would do all of that if the circumstances arise but y'all not in a fight or flight situation right now where he needs to show you how buff and manly he is and how he will protect you like he's a man he he looks like a man he has all the mannerisms of a sweet guy like Karen I, I just I don't know what I'm missing or maybe what she is missing from the equation but it's annoying. She's annoying me. And she's about to be on the same list with Henry, Christina, and Britt. Because <laughs> I'm about to be over all of them in this show. But that was this week's episode. Next week, we see them go back home, um, move into their apartments together. And then we'll see what drama unfolds next week, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button before you get out of here today. And I'll catch you guys next week. Same time, same place.